Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's Thursday morning and I'm down here at Darling Harbour, Cockle Bay and uh, it's going to be a hot, hot day today. They're talking about it hitting 36 or 37 degrees in the city and hitting the 40s out west it's very very still it's very quiet and it's very early and I'm down here at this beautiful installation an installation of brolgers I think there are 12 of them if I count them properly but the uh, the family of Brolgers are standing around this mythical mystical billabong and uh, just expressing various aspects of their lives I'm really proud to say today that today is the, the, the day, the moment, where I achieve a significant milestone in my creative life because today is the day where I deliver my 1,500th vlog on Jim's 5am Club 1,500 episodes of Jim's 5am Club where over the past three years we've been in a partnership in a journey a journey of discovery a journey of learning where we've walked and talked we've walked and talked through various challenging times times of pandemic uh, and other challenging days that we all face throughout our lives so today I'm going to go through yet another book summary I've absolutely loved the opportunity to uh, a get up early in the morning B sit on a bus coming to work and read a book summary online and then take some notes and then at some point throughout the day, usually in the morning, if I don't have an early start at work, I present the book summary where I take two or three of the key points and just discuss them uh, whilst including my own uh, views and experiences that I've been able to accumulate over the years. And, um, present it and document it and file it away on my YouTube channel um, and I'm in the process now of developing a website where I can make all of the material that I've presented over the past three years available to anybody who is interested. Today I'm really happy, really really happy to present a book from one of my f uh, favorite female authors, Marie Forleo, who wrote a fantastic book, a book that I can recommend to everybody to read. It's called Everything is Figureoutable. And uh, she also has her own YouTube channel. And she too is a prolific vlogger of material and um, her message is valuable to say the least so without any further ado what we'll do is we'll just go through and pick out some of the morsels pick out some of the pearls of wisdom that Marie is able to share with us and see how we can use them in our everyday life so Marie kicks off her, her book 
with a, a challenge for all of us where she says that the most powerful words in the universe are the words that you say to yourself the stories that we keep on repeating to ourselves the way we describe our experiences our past experiences and our present experiences and even our imagined future experiences to ourselves and it's interesting to say that because I've also read that the richness of a person's vocabulary will influence greatly the quality of the lifestyle that they have as well as the quality of the lifestyle of those around them because the richer your vocabulary is uh, the more attuned you are to what's going on and the more accurate you can be in your explanation and your description of what is going on in the world um, to yourself and to others um, using the correct words in the correct sequence to describe the things that you see, feel, smell, touch, experience is a powerful um, tool for each person to try and generate in their lifetimes. And we know that uh, people who are great at communicating, people who have great storytelling capabilities are also the people who tend to have a better life or a better life experience. And I guess it can work in different ways as well. Now you can use words for good and you can use them for evil. And to understand that there are people out there on the internet, in uh, the social media space, who do use words and data, um, not as information, but as misinformation and disinformation. So there are people, as we say, who craft their words in a way, who shape their words, who spin the words in a way to, um, to get their point across. But uh, what they're saying is not always accurate. What they say is not always true. Um, and it can be, as I said before, manipulated to their advantage. So we are called, each of us are called to be discerning in uh, what we say to ourselves, what we hear, who we hang out with. Because um, if you have an open mind, um, there can be some dangers there. Because having an open mind without a guard at the doors, at the gateway to your mind, may open you up to becoming a rubbish tip, an open cut rubbish tip for all other people to deposit their crap, their rubbish, their conspiracy theories in your head. And once you get to a point where you start accepting that rubbish, then there's no way in the world that you can ever stop receiving the rubbish uh, and that rubbish tip will just continue to grow and grow uh, over the years. Anyway, a little bit more about Marie Forleo. Marie Forleo um, had a mother who was a jack of all trades. She was one of those women who was independent and would just do things without um, thinking twice about getting them done things that uh, women back in those days wouldn't normally do and Marie being young being curious being um, trying to find out you know, how her mother ticks and how, how she thinks would ask her mum how she gets everything done you know raising a family working being a housewife uh, being a community contributor and all of those things and her mother basically said that 
just do things because everything is figure outable. And at that moment, it was a light bulb, light bulb moment, moment for Marie Forleo. A moment where she uh, all of a sudden saw life in a different light, uh, knowing that everything that you do um, has a solution. And it's up to you, it's up to each person to find that solution. And each person has a different life. Each person will have a different past, a different present, and a different future. And each person will be presented with different challenges throughout their lives because we all have different callings, different calling, and uh, it's up to each person to use their skills, to use their virtues, to use their God-given gifts, to try and get things done figure things out in a way that is empowering and that is productive not only for themselves but for those that they care for and love so the key message from this book and from Marie is that we all need to learn how to beat the excuses and find solutions through actions and activity So the first key point that comes from this book from Marie Forleo is that if you want to beat your mind at its own games and make your dreams happen, we need to adopt a mantra. We need, we need to adopt the mantra that everything, that everything is figure outable. Every day, each and every one of us make excuses with and because of our self-limiting beliefs. Um, we have huge dysfunctional thinking patterns, but in order to um, address those limiting and dysfunctional thinking patterns, we need to continue to repeat ourselves, repeat to ourselves that everything is figure outable. Everything has a solution. And we need to understand that every problem, um, as we said before, has a solution. But not only does every problem have a solution, every problem has multiple solutions. For example, if you want to get to the number 9, you can add 4 plus 5 together. Or you can add 6 plus 3 together. Or you can add 1 plus 8 together where you can take numbers away from other numbers. So the key message from Marie Forleo in this book is that everything is figure outable and there is more than one solution. There's more than one viable solution to every problem. So we need to be flexible in our approach and to know that if something doesn't work, then to try a different approach um, and to understand also that we all have a different fate. Uh, we all have a different life, a different fate. And if, it, if, you first, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. But not doing the same thing over and over again, but by varying your approach is the key message. And to know that there are some things that you will be able to do but there will also be things that we won't be able to do because it's not God's will to get it done. It's not your fate to achieve the thing that you dream to achieve. But give it a go, give it a crack, give it a good try, vary your approach, and if still you can't achieve your outcome, then you simply just need to understand that it's not meant to be and to move on. To try something else without getting hung up, without getting bitter, without getting stuck in your past. Just move on and just keep on going. The other thing that the author talks about here is procrastination, um, which is a trap that many people fall into. 
and Marie says in her book that you tend to make excuses whenever you say you can't. Now the reality is we need to face up and be honest with ourselves. The reality is that it's not that you can't do something. The reality is that you simply don't want to. Um, you know, the word can't is just a mask for laziness. It's just a word which you know, we use to uh, protect our egos. But uh, we need to understand also and to examine where these self-limiting beliefs come from. Um, and the reality is, for most people, these self-limiting beliefs come from our sheer laziness um, and not wanting to do something. It's just an excuse and people always love coming up with those excuses. Um, and to know that you won't if you say you can't, but to understand that where there's a will, there's always a way, and you need to be childlike in your approach, um, and like a little child, you know, if you want something, if you really, really want something, then you'll do whatever it takes to go over, under, through all the barriers that may present themselves along the way. So the call to action from this author is to uh, catch yourself saying that you can't. And if you say yourself you can't, you need to challenge yourself. And as Anthony Robbins used to say, if you can't, you must. Just say to yourself, if you can't, you must. And put some pressure on yourself to get things done. So the next point, the last point to come from this wonderful book, from this absolutely fantastic author, is to always start first knowing that you're never going to be ready. You're never going to be, it's never going to be the perfect time to start. The trick is to just start and to figure it out as you're going. Always start first and when you start, then you'll discover an endless supply of motivation, an endless supply of energy, and an endless supply of understanding of what you need to do and how you need to do it in order to get things done. You know, just keep moving, as my friend Johnny D always says. Just keep moving and you will find doors, new paths, new opportunities. You'll meet people along the way who are just going to, you know, magically um, uh, manifest solutions and ways of helping you along your path. We need to understand that procrastination is a disease. Procrastination is a prison that, uh, that incarcerates many people. Uh, and procrastination is basically the paralysis that people get through indecision, through not being able to decide to get something done. Making a decision is easy. You just say you're gonna do something and you just act. And taking action will conquer any fear, any fear, uncertainty and doubt that you may have, um, that you may have, in, you know, created in your own mind, or you may in have inherited it from other people, um, from other people who have other interests and not necessarily your interest at heart. So we've got to understand that this paralysis may go on indefinitely for years and there are some people who just don't have the courage to make decisions but Marie in her wonderful way encourages us, us to simply act take action and just start doing things to get you one step closer to where you need to be 
and you note that need to be perfect. The author here says, progress is more important than perfection. And you basically need to take small incremental steps on a regular basis and to assess along the path whether or not you're getting closer or further away from your goal and to just make the recalibration that is necessary to keep you on course and of course to keep you moving and the only way to find out if an idea is a good idea or not is to take the action required and there is no clarity or guarantees um, at the beginning of any journey we need to take the risks we all need to take the risks and with those risks also come the rewards but as we said there's never going to be a perfect time to start but the best time to start is right now by doing something anything that's going to help you build momentum because each path each road has a hump somewhere at the beginning or a couple of humps but you need momentum to get over those humps and the way you get over the hump is by starting uh, and pushing along the way and even when times are tough to continue to trust and believe in yourself so that you can get as I said the momentum to get you over that little hump and through that troubling uh, section of the path and as you move along the path as you take a step along the path you will get further and further down the path and then you'll be able to see what's coming next and you'll be able to see it in advance because the future never presents itself unannounced so as you're walking as you're moving along the path as I say you'll see what's coming up next and you'll be able to decide what's the best course of action and to figure it out as you're going because as you're moving as the author says you will get more energy you will get more momentum you will get more excited but you just need to continue you just need to, to move and to assess whether or not you're on the right path and whether or not you're doing the right thing so just begin just do it as the Nike uh, mantra says and be clear with your goal be tough with your goals and be flexible with your approach and I think that's about it so thank you very much for joining me on this special day for me in terms of uh, achieving my 1500th log I did the, the, I did the 1500th last week so this one here is 1499 which gets me to com that completion point and as I said I'm just going to now focus on building a website and making all of this material available to all and sundry whoever's interested and of course to continue adding to it over the years I don't know how many vlogs I'll end up doing but um, as I say I'll just add one at a time and um, continue to spread the word continue to live learn and pass it on and to make the most of every morning that I have the gift of life and that I have the energy and the motivation to do what I do anyway take care everybody looking forward to uh, chatting to you again where I can come to you from a different place with a different message of empowerment where we can mull over where we can muse on different things and see where it takes us take care everybody yasas and bye for now